All right, guys, welcome back to BFA's On The Ball Show, second segment. Uh, let's, I guess, continue where we left off. I said we were going to talk to Rav. I want to learn a bit more about uh, his company and what he's doing. What exactly is PR networking and how uh, maybe we can all get involved with what he's doing. So, so Rav, over to you. What is um, At The Match? So we're a, um, a sports PR networking and representation agency. Um, we work with sports foundations, charities, organisations, businesses and, and individuals that they just want to raise their profile, whether it's themselves as a company, the service they have to offer, products they have to offer, um, or whatever they whatever they do, they mm -hmm. they want to raise their profile because they they see what they've got, um, they know that they can achieve something quite special with it, that they can they've got a certain amount of goals and objectives that they want to achieve, um, but they need someone on their side to just help them open doors, mm -hmm. um, get word out there, um, which will hopefully give them a little bit of a success along the way. Okay, and, and how did you get involved in that and what, where, where, where did that idea come from in the first place? So I've, I, I literally just joined the company a month ago. Um, I left my former company, um, Football Exclusives, um, in December. Um, a month later, I was just doing freelance work. I was working with the Jason Roberts Foundation, who okay. um, happened to be a client of At The Match at mm -hmm. the time. Um, just got given an introduction and um, At The Match, yeah, just, just kind of took me on. Okay, uh, but in terms of um, kind of those people that are watching, any budding stars, any budding footballers or any sports person, mm -hmm. um, w what would be your service to them in terms of how you could progress them? Uh, is it yourself or was it someone within, how many people would be involved? What would that look like in terms of so, I mean, if it's, if representation, it's I guess? Is from the, the representation perspective, any, anyone obviously is a, a sports athlete, footballer, um, boxer, etc., uh, whatever sports pos um, position you're in, if you need representation, um, we're able to do that. We're able to have that discussion mm. um, to help you actually focus on what you need to focus on. If you're a footballer, you need to focus on playing football. You mm. need to be focused on those 90 minutes and that training, whether it's two, three times a week or whatever. Let us focus on everything outside. If you've got, your, if you've got intention of, you know, you want that little bit of a brand endorsement or mm. um, you just want your name out there, we'll worry about that. You worry about what you need to do. If you're a striker, put the ball in the back of the net. Um, if you're a boxer, win your fight, whatever needs to be. Uh, from a business perspective, if you need doors opened, if you want to be in rooms with, with people in the sporting environment to change your direction, whether you want to get into the sports world, um, again, we have the ability to do that. We can have that conversation. Okay. Um, I, I guess the, the next begs the ne uh, next question is, what kind of clients have you got? Any big names on your list? Um, we work very closely with the Jason Roberts Foundation. They're probably our, our biggest um, client. Yeah, biggest client, yeah. Um, Jason Roberts was someone who, whilst he was coming towards the end of his career, um, he approached at the match. We worked very closely with him, um, helping him turn from professional footballer into the media pundit that he is today, um, just giving him a platform and giving him an opportunity to actually learn that side of, of the game. Okay. Um, now, again, I guess as we, we will talk more about, we've got an education program that we've started with West Ham. Um, if there are any young youngsters out there who are looking to get into the, uh, you, you touched on your how you, your path changed from business to media mm. uh, and journalism, um, ex et cetera, but what, what is the best route for a youngster who's aspiring to, as there are, there are a lot of them out there now that mm. want to do that, uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago that wasn't the case. So someone might be out watching, 18, 17 year old kid might be watching now and thinking, hang oh, on, that sounds interesting. Yeah. What's the best pathway for them to get involved in this? I think the one word I'd always use is experience. Look at around you, um, where, who do you know, um, what experience can you get? Um, be a bit of a pest, call up organisations, call up people that you might know, get work experience. I think that's the most important thing that you can do. If you can get a degree along with it, then I think that's perfect. Um, but I think experience is key. Um, for me, for four and a half years, I unintentionally made a lot of good contacts, people like yourself, mm. um, without even realising it. And now I'm in a position where those contacts are coming in, in very useful. And now my job is actually to create contacts for other people. Um, and in, in those four and a half years, they're without even realising it, I made a lot of good contacts and that's another thing, just network, uh, be in and around and in rooms with people who can help you get to where you want to get to. But I think experience is key. Okay, fair point. Um, Toch, coming to you, I guess you might need this, <laughs> you yeah, might need yeah, Raph. No, yeah. come, come very we'll shortly. have a chat <laughs> Yeah, very <laughs> shortly. Um, Again, like I said, I said before, just before the break, uh, some amazing news for you, and, and you know, obviously for the for the club as well. You you know, you're going to be representing. You'll be on international duty <laughs> come May, right? And yeah, off season. And, um, tell us how how your involvement with the Punjab FA and where it all started. 
Um, essentially, uh, the Punjab FA is a part of an association called Kanifa, um, which is a confederation of independent football associations, essentially a step below um, FIFA. Uh, okay. So it's called Kanifa. It's uh, places uh, that may have had a past where they were a country or maybe deemed as a country. So in the early 1800s, uh, Punjab was deemed an uh, independent state um, and where the uh, free religion, free trade, however you want to look at it. Um, so Kanifa approached Punjab, uh, asked them uh, would they like to start it up. Um, and we've got a, a man in charge called Harpreet Singh uh, who's running the show. Uh, hours and uh, endless hours putting in all the work. He set up trials um, to for the Punjab. They didn't get the right level of talent, so they w expanded, they got a uh, good networking. They so when, w when, did, when were the initial uh, trials? I believe it was uh, November 2014. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So, um, so they had an open trial, P people that w were interested came. Uh, they had a good coaching team in, so the, uh, they had the manager set already, which is uh, Ruben Hazel, who's the uh, ex Oldham Athletic captain. Um, so he's got his team in, and last summer they went out and they literally went to um, p places that they've been recommended to, uh, looking at pl Asian players, people wi with uh, Punjabi heritage, and uh, scouted people that were recommended to them okay. and they were invited to training sessions at uh, Lillyshaw okay. so the facilities again wow. second to none um, luckily I was one of those players invited uh, I've done I've done okay there's a 25 man squad at the moment and it needs to be cut down to uh, 18 for the World Cup uh, which is in the end of May in Georgia okay and that will be how many na how many nations? Uh, it's 12 or? nations uh, a two-week tournament um, Again, representing Punjab. Uh, so, what what kind of nations are you going to be put up against? Uh, so, in terms, I think the current champions are a state in North Italy, um, who take their players from Serie A and Serie B. Okay. Um, there's a, a um, place in Russia who again take their players from a Russian league. So, so it's, it's yeah, a decent yeah, decent very level. Good, yeah. Okay. And you, you recently had a game against Leicester under 21s. Yep. Yep. Uh, it was go? a Leicester International Academy. So okay. um, uh, we were played them at a Leicester's training ground. Um, again, big squad. So you knew your numbers were limited mm -hmm. um, in terms of match play, uh, match time, uh, and you just had to impress. We we got a two-two draw. Uh, played the first half in midfield. Um, when I came off, it was 1-0. <laughs> just, <went there. laughs> um, just get that yeah. in there, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's good. Uh, again, the facilities, everything, coaching, it's, uh, it's all second to none, really. And right. they're just trying to give us a platform to perform. Um, and people like Rav, people like yourself who, who help, uh, it, it can only improve us. Okay, and now uh, in terms of the players and the spread of players that you've got, Mm -hmm. Are you all based in the UK, or have they got some? Some I, I don't know whether, whether obviously you've got the Indian, uh, the Super, the Football League uh, yeah, going yeah, on, yeah. on there. Is there a, yeah, have they yeah. got any players come from there? Um, well, yeah, people have uh, made t uh, made contact with them. Okay. So the squad that went to Leicester were predominantly from the UK, uh, but we have a training session on the 13th of March, um, which could be the last training session, and we've got players from Europe, players from Asia coming over uh, to try and get into the squad. Any potentially big name players from with Punjabi background that are playing at very good level at professional level that could um, be representing. Yeah, we've got um recently there's a winner of the Asian football with Gurjit Singh oh. uh, who's at Kidderminster okay. Harriers. Right. So uh, he's there. Uh, um, so he's given. He's no trials for him then, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, a lot again a lot of the talent w everyone knows each other we, we've, we've played against each other. Um, yeah, okay. Now I'm leading you've led nicely on to my next question. Uh, many people will know of the the Khalsa tournaments. Uh, many people watching may have played in the tournaments going, uh, you know, years gone by. How big is it still? And do, for those that don't know, just tell people what the Khalsa tournament is about. Okay. Um, so the KFF Khalsa tournaments are uh, five tournaments in the summer, um, every other weekend, uh, five different locations in the UK. Uh, predominantly the uh, different areas where players from them areas used to uh, compete. Um, it's positive uh, discrimination, so Asians only, um, and you're allowed two non-Asians uh, on the pitch at any one time. Um, okay. Again, those rules change from year to year. But the main point of it is just to compete, give, a, uh, again, a platform for Asians to compete 
for against and each other. And it is very competitive. Oh isn't yeah, it? very competitive. Um, as the years have gone on, unfortunately, in the eighties and the nineties, the people that used to attend, oh, it was I've, playing yeah. in the final. Yeah, yeah I, I still hear we've got a few people, the the original Sporting Bengal players that that set this, the likes of Mujahid, as, uh, you, you yeah, know, Jamal yeah, himself, yeah, you know yeah, Jamal yeah. well, they went and played in these tournaments and to this very day, you know, that's if you're going to make a name in, in Asian football, y you're no one unless you've played in a Kausa tournament, right? Yeah, so yeah exactly. Um, I've been fortunate. I, I play for um, Sing Sabah Hounslow in Jim Jim Corner and um, we've been number one seeds for the past five years. Okay. Um, so it's seeded, um, there's, there's money involved, there's talent involved. Um, but again, it's all a time where you get together play against each other. It's competitive, um, but going back to the Punjab game, um, you're playing with players that you play against, yeah. and uh, th th that is where the gulf of the talent is. So, so, so has that become the P Punjab FA, getting them together? It sounds to me like it's something, it, this has, or has the, maybe the, the, the opportunity to, or the, the likelihood of it becoming very similar to what we tried to set up with BFA and Sporting Bengal. Uh, where we had that pool of talent in the East London area, we created a, a football league, and whereby and Sporting Bengal became the flagship, and the the dream kind of dream ticket, I guess, that yeah, if you yeah. if you were a good footballer, you'd end up playing. So uh, playing, and your, the dream for you to play represents Sporting Bengal. Could these Khalsa tournaments now become something like that, where you got your managers that you mentioned and yeah. the staff from Punjab FA? Go into these tournaments in the summer, and, and literally getting, and so it's an opportunity for Punjab players of Punjabi origin to be playing international football. Yeah, yeah. Well, th that's it. Uh, th they are happy to travel wherever they need to in order to l have a look at the talent. Um, the the Punjab FA, BFA, they're all sleeping giants. Where there's a, there's a lot of talent there. It just needs to be shown and woken up. Mm. Um, uh, Rav, obviously you, you you've heard the story. You spoke to uh, Torch off air, but. What are your thoughts on this? And, and, and obviously you're very keen on this kind of thing, but mm -hmm. how important is that these kind of, uh, I guess, uh, nations, smaller nations, I guess they are now, and, and the tournaments such ones as the Mini World Cups, I guess you can talk, it, talk about and the 12 nations coming together in May. It's an opportunity for players, non-league footballers in particular, to, to experience the limelight, isn't it? It is. I mean, you use the word opportunity there. I mean, you've got an England C team as well. There used to be an England B, but there's an England C, which is designated only for non-league players oh. under the age of 23. Um, so it seems like there's definitely some sort of application going on here and you speak to these um, non-league players who do play for England C, they absolutely love it. The opportunity to represent their country, even at England C level, is amazing. So if we can get that going with, with the Punjab FA and um, with any, any other sort of association, it's only going to be a good thing. Okay, um, but uh, right. Okay, so that's f congratulations for a start. And on behalf of everybody at BFA and, and Sporting Bengal, uh, con well done. Yeah, Hopefully, we'll learn more. We'll keep everybody in the loop as to what's going on with Touch and how it gets. Hopefully, I'm, I'm guessing you'll be in the squad. It's a given. Oh, um, uh, the, the season you. you're having. So, um, but with that in mind, I, I, uh, let's come back to Sporting Bengal. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've had a personally, you've had an amazing season. I think everybody who. Okay. Uh, people that didn't know you at the beginning of the season might have wondered who's this touch, but all, you know, and then all of a sudden now they come every every week, and you know you're, you're an eight out of ten, nine out of ten on average standard, and you've got the captaincy now as well. Uh, you've gained, uh, you've earned the respect of the players and the management. Um, but how have, uh, you've mentioned in terms of your, you know, what your thoughts are, but how have, how personally how, how's your season gone, and are you are you ahead of schedule? Have you met your expectations? Uh, yeah, I mean personally. Obviously, when I joined, I came quite late, um, so I spent a lot of my pre-season at Grey's Athletic, mm. um, and then I came late uh, to the pre-season, but again, was made to feel very welcome immediately. Um, uh, there weren't, there was no negativity in terms of our wives, he just mm. turned up. Um, but as I touched on before, it's just a case of consistency. Uh, I needed to know wh what, I, what I needed to provide to the team. Uh, so I saw, we've got quite a young squad, um, so I'm 26 myself now. And I've been, I've been about, I've played at different levels. Um, so I felt like I needed to guide people uh, or help guide them in terms of learning match experience, game experience, uh, what to do in, in the right areas. Mm. Um, like I said, luckily uh, I've been quite consistent in my performance um, performances. You, you play a slightly different role to where you would normally play for the likes of Hunslow. And you're more of a, how, how have you found that? that yeah. Are you, are, you, are you used to being uh, being like, I yeah, yeah, I think uh, Jack of all trades, yeah. uh, Anwar called me. Um, I, that is part of my problem, um, where I can play a, a variety of positions. Uh, sometimes that works against me. 
uh, in terms of I'm not a specialist in a particular area. Um, Do you have a preferred position? <laughs> well, we all want to be a striker, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we all want to score. Uh, I guess I'm a frustrated number 10. Yeah. Uh, I like to get in the hole, um, like to dictate play. Um, but I think predominantly this year, I, I feel fit. Uh, I feel like I provide energy to the team. Yeah, um, definitely. And I can run, run all day. And I think that's, again, where, where I see my role in the team is to run, <laughs> to run, yeah. get the ball um, and play in the right areas, get the team playing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you had the chance to come down to Sporting Bengal and watch that all? I yet? haven't yet, but I've been spoken, worked quite closely with Anwar this season. Um, he's told me a lot of good things and he's, he's mentioned Todd quite a few <laughs> times, do you think? I think there was one or two games when um, perhaps you were injured or you were unavailable to play and he made the point of mentioning that we'll, we haven't got our captain this week. Yeah, okay. Um, but I'll be meaning to come down for sure. All right, well, we'll have to get you down to a game. But uh, Tots, just remind us how many goals, because recently we've been, <laughs> we missed Tunde. Tunde's our main man. Yeah. He's got, what well, I think he's got 18 goals. Yesterday he's got another goal. Uh, eight after, and he came back after a good six to eight week really? layoff. But without him, we struggled to oh, score goals. Massively, um, yeah. Although, you know, we, we, they were coming from all over at the beginning of the season. But all of a sudden now you started scoring <laughs> goals. Yeah. So, how many goals have you scored this season? Uh, I've got four. I've got, uh, I had three and three um, mm. before the weekend. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but again, I'm happy, obviously, if I score, if anyone scores, as long as it's a positive result for the team. That's all right. All OK, well, listen, while we're on that topic, let's, uh, we've got some, uh, few, uh, sh some short clips from yesterday's game at, uh, I guess it was a, a local derby. It usually is a massive one, but things have kind of a bit of a role reversal at the moment. Newham are going through a bit of a spell. I guess we were there this time last year as well. Uh, they were you know, towards the bottom of the table, seem a bit in disarray um, so they came there but to be honest they, they had a big squad yesterday uh, which in comparison to Sporting Bengal where we had a very much depleted squad so let's watch the clips that we have and when we come back we can talk about the game and uh, a bit more about next week's big clash with our local uh, rivals Tower Hamlet so two minutes and we'll come back and talk more to touch.
Right, as you saw, a good 2 0 win, and it makes a difference because we've been drawing. We are the draw specialists in that Essex Senior League. I think we have, uh, up until yesterday, it was 13 draws in 28 games. So uh, it was good to pick up three points. Touch, um, bagged yourself a little assist there with t the Tunde's uh, return goal yesterday. Yeah. Um, it was important yesterday, that win was much needed, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's local bragging rights uh, and whatnot, but. Um, we come back on the back of two disappointing results, uh, Barking away and Stamford away. So that was two defeats on the bounce. Mm. Uh, had a depleted squad again yesterday. We, we have a squad of 35 players. Um, and yesterday we only had 12 available. And like you mentioned before, uh, Tunde uh, coming back from injury. Mm. Uh, as you saw, saw from the clip, uh, we had a, yeah, uh, Rob, uh, he, he's uh, one of the kit men, uh, yeah. one of the coaches. Um, he was on the bench and Abdi got injured, so yeah. he had to come on and... and did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it's, it's different when you get to shout at him when he's on the <laughs> pitch. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, but like you said, it's a good result. 2-0, um, a scrappy game, um, but we took the goals. Sco goals change games, don't they? Mm. Uh, so... 1-0 up, uh, they had a missed penalty. That was crucial, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I, exactly. think, I think when they get that penalty, you're thinking, oh, here we go again, mm. another draw from, from a game that we really were comfortable yesterday. I know it was a, wasn't the best of games, but we had the better chances, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. And so it was, it, once they missed it and we got the second game, it was more, more of a relief than anything else. Exactly, yeah. You okay. touched on it um, in terms of Newham being in a similar position to Sporting Bengal last mm -hmm. year. Um, but this year, we're a solid mid-table team. Um, and considering where we were last year, the only way is up yeah. and uh, it's a good, good place to have. Perfect. All right, guys, we're out of time for this segment. Uh, when we come back, for those of you waiting for the CFL results, I'm going to run you through them. Um, and we've got some short highlights from a game from last week, which was uh, an outstanding game between uh, IFE and Saya, uh, two teams that know each other very well. So let's go to a short commercial break and we'll talk more to the guys uh, in the studio uh, when we return.